avail ourselves to be people who begin in Ma'at and then using the rhythm of Ma'at we develop African civilization. Ma'at be representing African wholeness, African health, the source of African being. Truth, Ma'at, reciprocity, Ma'at. And this is how we begin and then we develop our civilization, we do the work of that development, which is what our ancestors did. And in so doing, we need to periodically remind ourselves of who we are. This is what our ancestors would do when we were in a situation of health. And so that periodic uh, cleansing and reminding and recentering is Sankofa. and Ma'at bringing you truth. This is As Nasirka, and I'm coming to you to present a video that I actually did last February as a hair update. So you'll notice that my hair has developed quite a bit. I want you to see where we're at with the process now as I've been getting this African sunlight and this ocean water really bringing out the golden locks. But I just wanted to do the update because there's a lot of great tips about holistic hair care, um, particularly when it comes to spiritualizing and ritualizing the hair care process. So I hope that you enjoy this video. Blessings to everyone watching. This is an update video on my hair, right? And my locks and the process and where so I'm at right You can go now. back and actually see some of my older videos with when I shaved off all my hair and started growing back my afro. My intention at that point was to document the process, which I really wanted to do, but I was not able to do. You know, social media can just become a life of its own. And yeah, it just was not possible. Um, so I definitely wanted to do a check-in because of all the other great videos out there that I'm able to look at sometimes when I need to get inspiration or encouragement and things like that. So I definitely wanted to take some time to show my process. Today, I am going through the process. I'm gonna wash my hair with my aloe shampoo, which there's also a video that I previously made about how I do the aloe um, gel extraction directly from the leaf pretty much just washing my hair with aloe vera. Now it's a lot longer um, than what my hair used to be. It's also locked. So I also do Castile soap or black soap. Um, so if you have the African, the brown soap, you can also use that to wash your hair. This is just an all natural process. I think that's the biggest thing that my hair process has been all about. Um, for me, returning to my natural state for my hair was not just about my hair, it was about my whole lifestyle. And it's very important for me to not use any synthetic chemicals and to be very aware of what I'm using in my hair and to just keep it very simple and not do the extra. Um, that's also part of why I ended up locking my hair because I really was neglecting my afro and it was really just, you know, wild, crazy, very intentional. Um, but my hair wasn't healthy. And for the relationship that I have with my hair and the relationship that was developing with my hair, which you can also watch my, my video about why I decided to lock my hair for more details, but it led organically to this you know, process and to, you know, allow my hair to do what it wanted to do. So I had twisted my hair and just let it lock and this is the process and what it's been um, since then. I'm going to wash it with the gel and then I use castor oil. So stay tuned for the process and see what it's all about. Another thing that I'm using in my hair today is this rose water that I made last summer from um, my mother's roses in her rose garden um, when I went to go visit. So I have this, I'm also gonna use this in my hair because it has so many benefits. I carry, I carry I just washed my hair 
and I have to say one of the most important things to me about taking care of my hair is the process and I had to learn through learning to love my hair um, that there is a delicate connection and relationship to you know just the holistic aspect like that that this is part of me and that feeling that I had about my hair um, when as I was learning it because I hadn't known what my natural hair was going to be and you know all the programming and the conditioning around you know really um, the inferiority complex that's been imposed on us by the Eurocentric society all of those things were creating a barrier so as I began to develop a relationship with it I noticed that it's really important to do your hair to care for your hair to do your hair ritual when your spirit is in it and feels good and feels right because all of that energy is just circulating around you inside of you and I think that a lot of us lose sight of the significance of our hair in a metaphysical sense in a, and it's not even that it's metaphysical, it's scientific, you know, even the fact that as we communicate with different beings and the way we attract each other, the pheromones that are let out, you know, this is all happening through our hair. So the electromagnetic field of our body and all of these different things that, you know, our hair is a part of, it's not separate. And I say that to say that the process is so important for me and the reason why I couldn't, you know, some people do videos in the shower and it's like you see them actually washing their hair in the process, I'm just going to talk to you about that because it's very important to keep that, that space and that process sacred for me. And I think that if you try that, if it's not something that you already do, that you'll notice the difference. I had an audio playing from a video um, by Dr. Marimba Ani, who is an elder amazing woman it's called to be an african woman and as i was showering i wanted to be intentional about the type of energy and information that i wanted to bring into my hair and to to bring into my crown right to this energy center right that's connecting us to everything else around us and particularly the divine if we're thinking about it in a spiritual context so um, so that was really important for me because it was a time for me to connect with my hair. I cried um, while I was in there. If you are, you know, I trust that some people who have aligned to this video are um, serious in their journey. And by serious, I mean serious, um, the star, right? Sabu Septa, as our ancestors would call it. Um, our comedic ancestors in the Meduneta language, to be clear. Um, but who are on the path and are aligning with their true identity, um, you know, their cosmic identity, that video is very, very, very powerful. Um, so I'll put a link to that video. Um, and it was, it was a whole process, you know, I was crying, but my point is I also want to share the technical side of it. For me, I'm really big on like the DIY because I want to be connected to what I'm putting into my hair. I want to be putting my intentions. I want to be putting love um, into what I'm putting in my hair. So as I'm scraping the gel from the aloe leaf, that's a whole process in itself. You know, today when I was doing that, I was talking to my amazing sister friend um, Ramut, who's in Cabo Verde, and you know we were connecting on a higher level about you know some of our creative pursuits and some of the things that we're going to do when i travel back down there in a month so it was just all great vibes as i was going through that process this time i didn't add anything to it sometimes i put essential oils and things like that i decided not to do that um and just because i haven't washed my hair with aloe in the way that i used to always do and in a while i haven't been washing my hair often so for me i'm doing like a two three month wash period and i'm gonna do um two strand twists and just kind of leave that in i don't really wear my hair out that often um so yeah i'm gonna be in cabo verde next month so um i think when i get there i'll probably end up taking out the two strand twists because while i'm there i let my hair get as much sun as possible i'm swimming a lot 
so I don't really worry about wrapping it as often um, depending on where I'm going and what I'm doing um, and in general I just feel a lot more safe and I'm really in a receptive mode where I'm really trying to take in nature I'm really trying to take in the environment around me before I come back here and get like in this convoluted space with such dense energy so my point is Go through your process and make it sacred. Whatever that means for you. You don't have to do what I'm doing. I'm saying light candles, have your music on, but make sure you're choosing things that are really in the space that you want to be and with the energy that you want to be cultivating. And I say make it up full, right? Make it very um, positive, for lack of a better um, way to put it. Make it inspiring and uplifting. Um, and it depends on your energy and your vibe. Maybe you're in a more sensual mood and you just want to hear some strings um, or some jazz or maybe, you know, you want to listen to your hip hop or, you know, maybe you're in an intellectual space and you want to put on a lecture, um, whatever, whatever, or you want to be in silence, you know, sometimes just being in com complete silence or singing yourself um there's so many different ways it's really just about feeling into your spirit and what feels right in each moment it doesn't always have to be the same thing um some people think of ritual and they think of habit and they're not the same thing that's just like because i think in a lot of marketing now they're doing that they're making it seem like ritual and habit are the same thing like make this your ritual but it is just trying to sell you shit <laughs> so there's a different connotation floating out there now but really the ritual is the sacredness and the ritual is the fact that you're doing this process um you know it's a consistent thing also so so in a, a sense it is habitual but not in a objectified or like boxed way so you can make your process whatever you need it to be. Um, scents, incense, right? Like I'm gonna burn some frankincense and myrrh that I brought back from my trip, trip to Egypt. Um, I put the lotus oil, some pure lotus oil smells so amazing. Like I'm just saying like, for, cause for me it's like, I feel so good today. Cause I'm like, oh, I'm really taking this back to a real ancestral um, space because I did just come back from Egypt and um it was a very interesting experience to be able to be on on sacred land that is you know in a space of losing its sanctity but still powerful nonetheless and being able to get um the lotus oil for example that was extracted directly from um lotus plants and sunset and um you know it, it it's very nostalgic but powerful because it's like I'm literally doing what we've done for millions of years so you can find different ways where you can do that you can find lotus essential oil you can um, or, or whatever whatever really speaks to you eucalyptus oil I did the rose water rinse with my hair um, and I did that from flowers roses in my mother's garden so that was a deep you know, direct bloodline connection that I brought into it, which is also ancestral. We have to remember that it starts with us, right? And um, that's also what the audio I was listening to was speaking on, was that like, we're really carrying the ancestors in our wombs, right? Our eggs and the continuation, the, the children that, that we birth um, are all part of this continuous cycle. So our parents are part of that, our grandparents, and all of the great ones who came before them as well. So I put it into this castor oil. I'm just putting straight up castor oil before, like I had this amazing black castor oil that was extracted in Cabo Verde. And I was able to learn that process. The woman Domingas who taught me how to extract the castor oil from the seeds of the castor plant is actually the woman that my grandmother Bobo Jaja taught how to do that. So my grandmother didn't teach me, she's transitioned, but this woman who my grandmother taught was able to teach me. And that was just so powerful in itself. Um, but I ran out of it, but I'm going back next month, so I'm excited because I'm gonna um I'm gonna bring some back. And it it's the process in itself because that oil was not it was not super um 
let's say like it still had a smoky smell because the process is right over open flame um it wasn't as pure as this but the fact that of everything that went into it and that process is what made it so special so again it's really about the process and i think that that's the most important thing if you're not in the mood to do your hair don't do it don't feel like i gotta do it that's why I think I stand behind the whole head wrap movement. Like I be wrapping my hair all the time and it's not out of just laziness and not doing your hair, but you got to listen to your hair. That's literally you listening to your hair. Even if you're just throwing on the wrap because you don't feel like doing your hair, that's listening to your hair. Your hair is like, don't fuck with me right now. <laughs> so don't fuck with it. And that means nobody else needs to fuck with it either. And we have to learn to have that relationship with it and that connection to it. So I think that that's really important. Um, so yeah, I washed, I'm starting to put the oil in right now and I'm just going to twist in, twist it into my roots and palm roll pretty much. That's all I'm going to do this time. And then I'm going to do two strand twists, um, just to hold it in. And I'm thinking I might put elastics at the end. So the best thing for me is to twist the two that I'm gonna put together in the opposite direction of each other. So that way when I twist them together, they hold. Um, Cause sometimes that's something you might have trouble with. But um, yeah, I wash, I did do one one wash with the cast oil cause to get like the gunk and the, the um, you know, just all the dirt and stuff out of my hair. I did that with the castor oil, which I normally don't do, but I really have to make sure I get all of this hair too and I started noticing that I was washing my hair and I didn't feel like it was washing enough the other benefit of the castor oil that I like is it's not brown so I can see after <laughs> I wash if it's clean if I want to do multiple washes but today I only did one because my hair didn't really seem that dirty um because I think I had washed it when I had taken out my two strand twist which really hasn't been a month um and I walked because I washed it while I was in Egypt and then, um, and then I used the aloe and I did that throughout my whole head and I got it all through my roots and I just let that sit for a while before I even washed it out. And then I put in the rose water and I left that for a while and then I rinsed that out. And then I just added a little bit more of aloe just to keep my hair, the moisture in my hair. So I'm gonna just like, you know, and you can put that in water and um, spray it to keep your hair moist because the thing about the oil is you wanna, um, you want it to lock in the moisture. So you don't wanna put it in dry hair because by the time you get to the one end of your hair or you get halfway through, your hair might be dry. So just keep that in mind. But I think that it's really important to think about that part. And yeah, for me, um, as I go through my hair today, you know, I'm just glad that I also am doing this video as an update and sharing with you how I feel about the process now. You know, I have a set rhythm and routine. I'm only going to do my hair and like beauty um, related, you know, things or hair or care, self love on Fridays, which harmonize with the energy of Heteru. Um, heteru, um, some people may know from the Greek translation of that to Hathor, but it is the universal force or energy of, um, you know, beauty and attraction and, um, nourishment, the feminine aspect of, um, you know, it's symbolized usually with the cow. When you think about the female cow and you think about its milk and the nourishment, all of these different symbols were used to kind of invoke that energy, which is really the energy of what I'm talking about right now and the energy that we all exude when we're really um, immersed in, you know, our process, our face masks, um, our grooming, our nails, all of these different things. So that is Heteru. Um, and Friday is associated with Heteru because it's Venus, which even if you look at Friday and the name itself, Look, going back to how they're associated with each planet some people may not know that but each day of the week from the roman because we're using latin is associated with a particular planet 
So that, that's one way that I've been harmonizing what I choose to do on particular days. Um, and I think that that's been amazing. And yeah, so I just wanted to share that. I'm going to continue to go through my process. I'm not really going to share and show that part, but I hope that, you know, you have something that you've been able to take from this video, please share and talk about maybe some things that you do in your process or some of the um, all natural um, products or DIY things that you've tried to incorporate into your process. Um, if you're someone that does a lot, what may be some of your like hesitance in simplifying your regimen or um, you know, where are you at in your stage in your process? Because everybody's at a different place and everybody's intentions are different in terms of their journey and wh why and what they're going through. So it's always layers and levels to go deeper. So um, I'm sending everybody love as they continue to immerse themselves within themselves and um, learning to be intimate with themselves through their hair. So I love all my sisters out there and my brothers and um, if this video was helpful for you, give me a thumbs up. Um, definitely leave a comment and let me know what you're thinking and what's going on with you, where you're at, and um, what would be a good follow-up video or things that you'd be interested in knowing. I don't really like to talk, to, to share too much about like actual processes. I really like to explore the depth and the, and the, um, the deeper side of you know our hair and our struggles with our hair and our victories with our hair and our history um so anything along those lines i'm not gonna do a <laughs> i don't know a video showing you how to crochet your hair but who knows never say never i'm actually might do that because i'm learning that right now but i must learn before i can teach others okay so much love uh, travel light wherever you are throughout your day. Thank you for watching. Subscribe. Check out my other videos if you're enjoying the vibe. If you feel connected to anything that I'm saying and sharing. Um, yeah. Travel light. <laughs>